the good news is, I guess, that plenty of people have, have got success with this, um, selling courses without using paid traffic, um, selling products even without paid traffic, mm -hmm. like... Um, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to Marketing While Muslim. This is the podcast from Muslim CEO where we go through marketing and business challenges and we try and set ourselves up here where we have to kind of solve that challenge, solve that problem kind of live, unedited on this podcast. Um, every time one of us picks the, the topic or the challenge uh, that we have to go through, the other two don't know. So this week it is uh, Faisal who's going to uh, throw that challenge at us and we're going to try and work through it. Um, if I didn't mention it's episode 11, we do have a video version of this on YouTube, on Facebook and audio version uh, wherever you get your podcast. So, uh, you know, the, the video version is a little bit better. Usually we share our screen, you can see our notes, um, but either way, you're going to gain a lot, inshallah. So uh, having said that, Faisal, what's the topic? Okay, <clears throat> so topic is a bit of a cheeky one, a bit of a personal interest, but Obviously, we wanted to focus on our content and, and kind of course creators uh, for this episode this week. And um, often the advice that um, people give is, especially when people are doing courses in, I say, a business niche or a health niche or something, that you should charge maybe three to five hundred pounds or, or, or plus. It should be you know, more than that. So you can actually do the advertising and, and have the enough money left over, etc. What if, and so what I want to do is I actually wanted to throw a niche topic at, at us. What, what, what would you do if a course is only between 20 and $50 and it's not for one of those, you know, evergreen green niches? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's the, the, the essence of, of, of today's topic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and yeah. what is the industry or topic of the course? Yeah, so, so I'll give you an example. So um, the, the one I was, I was thinking of, so there's a, a course that... Um, um, like a, a kind of a contributor has put together. Um, there's one on like philosophy, for example, or there's one on 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 science, and you know um, the, the the mystic who came up who invented modern science or something. So it's again it's a very niche topic about the golden age and stuff. So it's like, okay, how does how would you push that out? Um, so that um, I, you know because you know that's not an area that everyone will be interested in. So how mm -hmm. do how would you kind of att attack something like that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. so we'll stop. I guess we'll do that. We won't do the philosophy one, um, but we'll do. Uh, I just want to give a couple of examples of mm -hmm. what I mean by niche, micro niche topics. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, the the good news is, I guess that plenty of people have have got success with this, um, selling courses without using paid traffic. Um, selling products even without paid traffic mm -hmm. like uh, I don't know there's a few youtubers that come to mind that have uh, generated millions of dollars of, of through their courses their courses I want to say they're less than three hundred dollars actually and they've generated millions of dollars a year um, through them obviously that's because they pump out content the content is very popular etc so yeah. Yeah, I want to I want to say that this episode we might focus on content. Then I guess creating content to to create a, to attract an audience and retain that audience, right? Is there any other angles we could go down with this? Yeah, um, uh, I think there, there is like is, messaging, um, maybe. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think this is the thing, isn't it? It's like what I, it's about being cre uh, creative because I think content is an obvious one. Yeah, you know, building up that personal brand so people are buying from you, no matter mm -hmm. what the course is. So I understand. Mm -hmm aspect mm -hmm. um one aspect i guess of it is that okay um like if you were to use some of the other digital marketing uh, systems let's say is there anything else that would come to mind so for example mm -hmm. would you do like a, a, a you know a, a lead magnet to a i think we should uh, map it out first what or, is it like get very specific because yeah. doing it like yeah. this is gonna yeah. it's gonna kind of throw us off a little bit so let's get very yeah specific. it's very it's, it's just, it's hypothetical. yeah okay cool so let me I'll do that uh, uh, can you share, uh, enable the she's screen sharing? Yeah, sure. Okay, it should be fine now. Okay, cool. Right. Um, share screen. So this is the the course. Where is it? 
and tell me, let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So this is, of course, so it's the mystic who created modern science. And so it's, a, it's basically an introduction into uh, Jabra ibn Hayyan. Yeah. Um, so a course overview, this is what you heard about, like the life and achievements of Jabra ibn Hayyan, first scientist in, in history to emphasize on experiment science. And this is what, this is what science is starting the first scientific revolution. Um, so, and he, he basically brought ideas to light, like artificial intelligence, synthetic biology, biomimicry, transhumanism, etc., through his texts. Um, so, so that's the kind of um, the, the, the essence of it. What you, this is the things that you learn, and these are the kind of texts and stuff that are with it. You get a course book and all of these things. I mean, the pricing of it is uh, $19, $19. So it's very, like, it's, it's quite comprehensive for what you get um, for, for $19 and stuff. So that's essentially the, what we're working with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the reason why I mentioned the philosophy one because that one has got a similar amount of content, but that's around fifty dollars. So that's why I said that between the twenty to fifty dollar kind of uh, price range. I mean, the, the same strategy would work, I guess. Yeah, yeah. What I'm seeing here, Faisal, is like, what you know, if 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 we were like you know uh, helping a, one of our students out or whatever, we would probably first make sure that they've begun with the whole product market fit side of mm. things, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so we would be like, okay, who is this for? And what, you know, problem do they have that this will then solve? This will be the solution to. So what do you think about those sure. questions? Yeah, and I think this is it's a quite interesting point because um, what this is designed to do, because uh, it's obviously, it's, it's designed to almost uh, um, people to undergo a paradigm shift. In a way, the problem with this is that it doesn't, necessarily solve a problem that people know that they have mm -hmm. that and I, but it's one of the ones where you're because through the content you're exposed to some a, a new way of thinking and so it's supposed that's supposed to capture intrigue to think oh, okay you know what that sounds really you know i need to know more about this that is it's kind of fl flipped in, in, in you know in the approach as opposed mm -hmm. to it being the way around I, I'm, but this is this is why micro and, uh, topics and stuff have come up as today's topic because we know product market. If you're solving a problem, like that's that's why, for example, if this was a twenty or four fifty dollar course on Photoshop, it wouldn't be a problem because mm. Photoshop is a very specific problem that by if I'm doing this course, I know how to then use Photoshop. Mm -hmm. But uh, so what? What about abstract things that people? are interested in uh, like the, the mm. humanities also you're a geography student yourself like if there's a course on geography if there's a course on history mm. you know people don't necessarily like it's more of an interest thing as opposed to oh, i am going to mm. get a transformation out of it well that's what school's for bro you you force feed people information <laughs> um <laughs> yeah um i think bro there still uh can be a problem and a solution right and it might be sure. not obvious one. Okay. So like, mm. think of it, maybe think it will, maybe you could think of it backwards. So this uh, course, if, if you went through it, what benefit would you get out of it? So the, the benefit is that it would um, almost um, like basically we've been indoctrinated into obviously we living in the west we've been indoctrinated into, into the western understanding of what science is we've whitewashed history etc so uh -huh. you'd understand not only the islamic roots of of science mm -hmm. um you know that why we were so central uh, and why our methods and you know, basically it would, it would it'd actually make you firmer in your in your belief but secondly it would help you to um Sort of battle back against some of the myths that that are surround science and scientism and all these different things mm. today. And what's the problem with uh, those myths? The problem is is that it's um, it's confusing people. It's simply leaving, even leaving some people outside outside the fold of Islam. It's leading people to atheism, and there's mm -hmm. a, there's so much um, mm -hmm. confusion around it and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So doesn't that sound like problems to you? Yeah, yeah it does. It does sound like a problem. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, so that's the kind of problem I would lead with with this, where it's it's like, for now, like when you're just leading people towards the course, who cares about Jabir bin Hayyan? Like, I don't know who that is. Um, it's more the course yeah. maybe should be marketed as uh, uh, smashing doubts, or it should be uh, uh, marketed as 
uh, feeling confident about your uh, people and your history and your whatever, who you are, actually, make it all about you. Understood. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So that, that oh, yeah. maybe that's the angle where it's like there's a real problem is that I'm, for example, let's say you're targeting, uh, I don't know, uh, 25 to 45 year olds in the UK, mm. for example. Yeah. Yeah. Muslims. OK. Um, maybe that some some of those people will have the problem that uh, they don't feel confident being a Muslim in the UK in 2021. Right. So mm. there's a Gary V on it. Always like add another year to it. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So so that's their pro that's their problem. So so we could uh, the whole angle for the course could be that we're going to solve that problem. They, we're going to make them feel confident about their religion. We're going to uh, make give them strength, stronger faith, stronger iman, stronger certainty that you know uh, this this religion has the answers to everything. And it's not anti-science as everyone's trying to make it out to be and all of that. So that for me, bro, that's maybe the the uh, the problem uh, and the solution and all of that. Yeah, that's very good. Very what good. do you think, Mohammed? Uh, I want to do it. I think, um, yeah, the first kind of, uh, first conclusion I came to in my mind was confidence as well. But I just didn't want to say it because I was thinking mm. maybe I just default is confidence. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think mm. confidence is good. I think... Um, there's also an, an element of um, thinking differently, right? A lot of this is about critical thinking and shifting your paradigm, like mm. you keep saying, right? But what we need to realize yeah. is what's the benefit of a paradigm shift? The benefit of a paradigm shift is that it changes the way that you view the world. Um, and when you view something differently, it will change the way you think about it. It will change the way you feel about it and it will change the way you behave about it. So, uh, with that in mind, you need to kind of go with that kind of thing where it's like, you know, it's the whole critical thinking thing, but it's got to bring benefit out into your life and behavior and relationships and all of those things. Mm. So although it's not one of those evergreen ones, you can actually use it to benefit your evergreen stuff, right? So yeah. if someone's thinking critically or thinking differently, that would actually help their marriage as opposed to if they yeah. just thought the same way they have always thought in their marriage. So that's still an evergreen thing right there, right? If they're thinking differently about their uh, about their life, you know, their business will be uh, very different as well. And their work and the way that they deal with challenges at work. So like you can actually bring the evergreen niches in and maybe like just to yeah. explain the evergreen niches, we're saying that there's certain things that they always have like massive uh, like traction and they'll always be very popular. Things like uh, health, uh, wealth and relationships. So we're saying that even though this is not a course about any of those things. If you look at what the course can achieve, that will mm. actually benefit those things. Yeah. So what, what essentially what you're saying is that um, Jabra Punyan in this case is, is irrelevant or he's just a mechanism yes. through the, which the example yeah. or the transformation is happens. Really yeah. what it's about is um, using his, uh, using him as an example of, oh, this is, uh, you know, what will make you uh, have that paradigm shift in, in terms of your critical thinking yeah. and, being be able to be confident as a Muslim and all the that. other thing I would yeah. say first that is that, um, uh, also what what I mean saying about confidence is is correct in the sense of like generally it'll help them to be more confident right but another uh, angle you could go to through a sub angle of that is actually uh, identity right uh, mm -hmm. like building that Muslim uh, identity so uh, it could that you could do a whole series of it like you know superheroes of Islam or something right but the point yeah. is that like actually building that identity because people are lost about who they are, right? And that's a real problem. Yeah. Uh, there's a whole element of purpose around there. Like, you know, what, what am I supposed yeah. to do? Okay. Uh, and, and the whole thing around linking who they are with what they do and all of that. Um, so I think, again, if you, if you kind of, how do you find who you are? A lot of it is to look at other people and be inspired from them. Yeah. Right. So that whole notion of, finding out who you are by discovering your past and discovering your people. Like that's a big pain. Yeah. I've got a question for those that, you know, might be listening, might be beneficial. <clears throat> and for me as well, what, what about just, you know, sometimes when people make these niche courses or they want to talk about niche topics, um, they just, they just want to do it like, like as it is, they want to do the raw version. They don't want to, water it down and change mm -hmm. the angle and cater to, to people and stuff right um 
and and often what they'll do is you know they get very little interest um but that's maybe fine for them because it's niche anyway right um what about those people that might be thinking you know i just want to keep it pure i you know why do i have to like kind of almost trick people into coming on to learn my <laughs> thing you for know me, for me i mean that's, it's a good i think i think this is actually a very common thing amongst people yeah. that are like content creators and book writers and all this stuff right um the, the, my my view on that is that yes of course sometimes you have to express yourself uh, and you have to feel like you've expressed yourself authentically right um but the way i look at this is really about communication fundamentally what is communication about communication is fundamentally you know people always say like communication is about getting the message out right and so i'm like okay so if i go to someone i'm going to my my objective is to give them dawah and i say you're going jahannam have i got the message out if that's a non-muslim right or if i say if you continue to be a non-muslim you're going jahannam like that's that's the message done and then people start thinking oh no it's going to be done uh, in a nice way and they but fundamentally communication is about influence okay and influence has to consider the person you're talking to because what influences yeah. them is what already influences them so if mm. i was to write and express myself for communication have that uh, thing where i want my communication to be influential and i don't consider the audience or don't uh, modify my communication for them in any way i think it's detrimental to the overall objective yeah so yeah. so i think you need to find that balance between that pure expression uh, and then also that and sometimes it's the bait and switch thing right where you're like you're bringing them in like if you look at someone like uh, Tony uh, not Tony someone like um uh, Stephen Covey he wrote his whole book called the seven habits and he basically does an amazing job in in telling you how to be productive all this stuff and at the end he says i invite you to believe in the creator right so it's that kind of bait and switch where he's giving you so much value and then at the end he's just been very authentic in in why he wrote the book and what he's doing with it so i think there's yeah. that balance but you've got to have that marketing edge otherwise your work's not going to get seen or or uh, yeah, you know take absolutely like yeah and I, i think that this is the the reality of the internet isn't it? that there's so much content created there's so much mm. stuff out there and some of some of gems but again but if because they haven't they've just expressed they haven't um I did that marketing I went to it yeah so, one, a great one, example one thing, a great example first, first, one last I thing I just, I, sorry I just want to say what? one last thing on that I mean because I know content creators watching this would feel oh but that's maybe being me or being inauthentic and so what I wanted to say is that the communication that we're talking about the tweak is actually a tweak it's not a huge change right mm. so it's not so much like okay i've got to change my like i'm saying uh, the world is black and now i have to say the world is blue no no it's not like that yeah. at all right it could be the difference between saying um you know why i love uh, marketing and and changing that to why you should love marketing not, yeah, yeah or you yeah. must love it's marketing. true absolutely so it's just a tweak But, in the I, way that you're saying that thing rather than it being mm. oh i'm being inauthentic and changing my message Absolutely. I I think that there's uh, if you look at email in no not email sorry if you look at just mar- digital marketing in general and we always talk about oh, you need to there's, t- there's lots of different variables you need to tweak x y z a b testing it's the same like we look at subject lines and we think okay this one might work this one might not work and so also we're not yeah. that precious about subject lines yeah. but it's the same as the same principle what's what's that book mm. the astrophysics of love or something what what's, yeah. what what does that mean oh, yeah. different love languages is that love languages right no no, no. no. astronomical love or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Men, because men are from Mars, women are from Venus. No, 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 no. It became how to get the love of your uh, life oh, every single yeah, time course. or something like that. Yeah, something like that, right, yeah. So, but again, that's a great example that it was this abstract thing that was very academic and people didn't get it. He, all they did was just change the title to something yeah. that um, was just yeah. directly spoke to the... Course, and it became a bestseller. And, yeah. and it, it was interesting because... Um, there's a really big writer out there on medium he writes on this topic of learning how to learn and this and that and uh this is one of his most viral articles was just uh, how to write a blog post to hit that goes viral every every time and he goes that the 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 whole premise of it is just change your headlines he goes that the headline is the one if you go a lot of people have got amazing articles out there but because the headline is poor um it just it, it just sits on the shelf yeah 
Yeah. So ultimately, mm. that that's the whole thing. So mm. um, what you're saying is that the um, the hook and the angle and and so should just all be directed towards the intrigue, towards getting people um, to just yeah, I I need this. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. Mm, yeah and you know i was thinking of this channel it's called oh what's it called it's like cold cold fusion or something maybe yeah, cold fusion, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, i was thinking it, this came to mind Faisal, because uh, the the tagline is kind of like thinking different or something like that yeah. or different thinking or something like that and i was thinking yeah like if this guy promoted something like this quite a niche and uh, uh, not this isn't really abstract but it's a bit niche like he might get like decent amount of customers buying it, but not a big uptake maybe because because you know it's it's quite it doesn't have that direct benefit thing right. Mm. Um, but then I was thinking, okay, well, his whole thing is thinking different, right? But how did he get the audience? He's got quite a big audience. How did he get it? His videos that like got his audience is like, um, how big is Samsung? You know, and then in brackets. <laughs> They have their own military department, you know. So he he <laughs> yeah, actually yeah, yeah. he made yeah. yeah he well yeah obviously there are always often elements of curiosity but he was um, piggybacking on these big company names big names right yeah, yeah. Um, or like for example he, he sometimes he makes it's quite a niche topic like he makes videos about like microbiology and um, uh, advances yeah. in in cancer um, research right how to fight cancer. Um, but he won't title the video that, you know, he'll title it something, you know, like this cancer breakthrough could do X, Y, Z, you know, mm. or he might use a little, uh, a, a technical word, which makes you curious, you know? So yeah, even, you know, he's got, his whole thing is thinking different. Um, and his, the way he goes about it is still like in quite a marketing way. Very good. Okay. Amazing. So, okay. So, so getting the, the headline and um, direct benefit, all that kind of stuff, is is is, is clear. Now, now you, you mentioned a lot at the start about okay, pushing out content uh, makes people want this stuff. So obviously, so one aspect is the whole kind of personal brand, having you know maybe your own YouTube channel or Instagram or Facebook where people um, directly are seeing your um, your content. They want you know want more from you and so. Uh, because they've been following for, for for a long time, they just want the next natural step, which is okay. Let me buy something so cheap and cheerful. So that's something that's twenty dollars, fifty dollars. That's, $50, that's yeah. not a, a too much of a, a big step for someone to take if they've been following you for a while. Um, so, is, do you have any advice for, or how do you incentivize someone to to take that route if if they have got a channel, for example, or if they have got a lot of followers, or they have been growing for for a while? So you mean now, how do we sell? when we've got an audience yeah 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 so one one is the one aspect i guess is that how do you build an audience but i think we have talked about that a lot in the in the past and all the different things that you can do to push out content um yeah. but if you have got an audience what do you do to um kind of uh, mm. push that out you know to to then uh, because obviously up until now they've been consumers they haven't been buyers and how do you make that shift yeah so you can do i guess a launch you know that's one way of doing it some people would do a launch and some people would just keep it in the background kind of thing where it's like you mention it for five seconds in every future video yeah you know, I mean, we, we, we kind of we kind of did both of those things uh, with muslim mastery so if you think about muslim mastery we, we gave value for years and years and years um yeah. and uh, we were just like i said everyone was just a consumer because we never ever had anything to sell um, and then what we did with our first one is that we did a closed private launch to the mailing list. Uh, it was a very small mailing list, um, but still it was a very good launch uh, in that sense. And uh, we, for that, we used PLF style thing, right? Which is basically, uh, you know, giving them a video series. Uh, and, but we went all out with that kind of thing, way of thinking, which is like we started by asking them questions about the main thing, right? So for this example- This is before you made the product. No, no, we had actually yeah. made the product. No. no, no, we made the product. That's why I'm saying it because it's very relevant to this, that we made the product, but we, we kind of thought about what's the main benefit of the product and we wanted to link it to uh, happiness and freedom, right? Um, so what we did is we basically started by asking our existing mailing list what, uh, what like questions about happiness and freedom and feeling happy and the opposite of that problem as well, right? Um, and then what happened is we got lots of great information. 
So that great information, we actually like checked if it was in the course. And if it wasn't in the course, we then decided to create bonuses for it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, for example, there was one bonus that we created about how to deal with annoying people or something along those lines. Right. There was another bonus that we created that it's okay to feel sad because a lot of the mm -hmm. happiness stuff was people feeling sad. So it gave, gave us information of what they really, really wanted alongside what we had. We added those bonuses. Then we went mm. back to the same audience and we said, hey, guys, look, we're doing this on happiness and stuff. By the way, the bonuses are these things. Right. So that communication mm, with that audience uh, suddenly like it made us do a what, what I consider a very successful launch for the product. Um, so that's one element of it. And then really since then, what we've kind of done is more done it in the background, like Amin saying. So, for example, um, we have a video series, which the same video series becomes like an email thing where you, you watch the different emails everything we do in Muslim Mastery kind of leads to that page. Um, and then also like this weekend, I'm doing a um, Muslim Mastery live on YouTube and I'm just going to ask, answer people's questions. I'm just going to like uh, give coaching and all of that. But the core message within the, within the actual title and everything is going to be to go to that link. And I'll be talking about that link within there as well. So hopefully people that are on the live stream, it's directing them to the actual uh, landing page. They'll sign up, they'll opt in. And then within a few days, they'll get an offer for the course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. Yeah, so basically, so what you're saying is essentially do um, all the, the video series as part of this big launch that you do privately, get feedback from yeah. your, your list uh, and, and, and uh, you know, whatever they say that you haven't incorporated, incorporate that as bonuses. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, that allows you to kind of um, to, to do well with it. And then once once you've actually done the big launch, it becomes a staple of your um, offer because it's something yeah. that you can just have on an email list yeah. and automated. And if you look at you know, someone you know like something Alex that Becker, James, sorry, Alex Becker, basically what he did for a long time, if you guys used to follow him, he would just switch on the live stream. He was quite an entertaining personality, right? He'd switch on the live stream and he'd say, ask me anything about business. And in every live stream, he would have an offer towards his courses or something like that, mm -hmm. right? And so you imagine if you're going live every single day and you've got people yeah. coming on the live stream and, and then they are being directed to that, it, it can just be, that could be your main source of lead generation and selling the course, mm -hmm. just that one yeah. thing and, and mm -hmm. picking that one thing and then going all out with that rather than mm -hmm. going, okay, I'm going to go on 20 different platforms and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Just choosing one. Sorry, man, you're mm -hmm. going to say something. Yeah, I was going to say um, the the whole launch thing where you've got like launch videos and launch emails, you can do that first time, like actually live um, where, you know, you're sending out emails one time to the audience. Yeah. But then once that's done, if you're kind of happy with the results, you can then turn that into an evergreen launch yeah. where it's um, yeah. personalized. And this is something that James clear did where once you sign up to his mailing list to receive his, I think his daily blog post that he used to write, um, if you engage with those emails a lot, let's say out of the five emails, five first emails he sends you, you open four or five of them, then he'll start, his software knows that, and he'll, he'll start offering you his course, right? And this is all done automated. So that's kind of a, a way to do it as well, where it's like personalized to the engagement level of the person. Yeah, okay, that's good. Yeah, that's very deep, man. Personalized to the... Yeah, See, this but that's the thing. Marketing thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. Amazing. The the point is um about this whole having an audience thing. It's very important to acknowledge the power of having an audience, an existing audience. Yeah. Um, like what Muhammad highlighted, it's like uh, because you have the attention of people, they're willing to reply to your emails. That's very powerful to get mm -hmm. feedback and to like ask them what do you want basically, and yeah, then yeah. to to help them with that. And it could be that you create a whole product from scratch to help them based on their answers. Um, and it also could be that you, um, you, you kind of cater to the marketing of that product to, to them uh, from their responses as well. So it could go either way. Yeah. I think a lot, some companies that they work with influencers who have got a big audience, but they don't really know the business side of things. And that's like one of the first things they do is like, they'll spend a few months just getting um, feedback and understanding the they audience do. better. Um, and then based on that, they can make any product. Like it could be a physical product, it could be like merch, it could be a course, it could be so many things. Yeah. And obviously that also will give them data to then go to advertisers and say, look, um, our audience is really interested in 
X, Y, Z, and you sell that stuff. So I think it'll do well if you advertise on our channel. Yeah, yeah got you. Right. Yeah, so, so the, what I'm trying to say is the data and the, having an audience is a very big deal. Even if that audience is like uh, 200 people, to be honest, you know, that's valuable. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the big thing. I mean, that you know, when it comes to the audience, what's more important than the size of the audience is actually the engagement. Um, yeah. That if the audience is engaged, and this is like, um, you know, with, with uh, what's the name of the guy who did PLF? Jeff something. Walker. Right? Yeah, Jeff Walker. <laughs> what, what, what he says is, he says, look, even if your mailing list is 100 people, you can still have a successful launch as long as that's 100 people that are engaged it like truly engage with your content yeah. and stuff right you don't need to have you know two hundred thousand mm -hmm. people on your mailing list for it to be a successful launch uh it's it's about engagement and engagement's to do with relationship and relationships have to do with communication and this is why it's so important to get really really good at copywriting and content and things like this because this is what will mm -hmm. really define that relationship and get that engagement um and you know i'm going to do like a shameless plug here that it's a great thing for you guys to go to the muslim ceo website uh, and learn about this kind of stuff. We've got free training there where we talk about, um, you know, the tools that we use to communicate effectively. And so I think like definitely if you're into any sort of marketing, copywriting and all this stuff, I know, I mean, you're always saying that this is one of the number one skills that you need as well. And I think it's so important for that building that relationship and having that engagement. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, uh, always, another thing that he's always like, banged on about is cleansing your email list. So obviously... <laughs> Uh, it's always good to have the big numbers. Oh, yeah, I've got a 10k yeah. main list or a 20k main list. But if you only have, you know, you know, X percent uh, open rates and nobody's really interested and stuff, what what's the what's the benefit? All you're doing is you're paying extra for, you know, for just for the vanity of it. So like I said, uh, get, get <laughs> for the, the vanity, um, yeah, uh, uh, getting that. Yeah, yeah, so, we we had that um, client so, we work with. They had like 200k list, um, but they had like three percent open rates. Mm. You know, you don't want that. <clears throat> yeah, this is it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so let's say uh, um, we're gearing up for a launch, right? Um, what does it need to look like from a just a, a social media? Perspective? So I understand the, the the kind of the PLF style and that directs people. So obviously, the way PLF kind of works is that you obviously push it out to your own list, and then potentially you can get affiliates involved, and you know you give them a share, and they can send people um the, uh, the same video series and take a cut as well but what about on 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 social do you have to create teasers of, of courses and stuff like what 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 do you suggest from that side of things so after you mentioned the live thing already hmm. for me that, like i said this is this is the thing uh, in terms of choosing your launch strategy right like you're going to be very very clear so for example with something like this you might go down uh, the route that i mentioned which is you have an automated video mini video series uh, which they have an email for and stuff and so what we could do is like 10 questions you know of what they should be asking 10 questions all those kind of things which all direct to that uh, mini video series right um the other way you could do it which is probably a bit more direct is that you could do a free trial of the f of the course as in give them module one free right and you want module one to be mm -hmm the the best one and so rather than going best. through the work of of creating a brand new uh like series you could use the first one but you need to make sure your first one is mind-blowing right you want them to watch it and go mm. oh not that this has solved my problem but go oh now i know i definitely need this you know so i think having that kind of mm. uh, free trial kind of thing i think that's good the other thing you could do is um you could actually do the whole thing of pay whatever you like right so um, that way, the risk is kind of removed from it. You feel like, oh, I could pay whatever I want for this type of thing, yeah. right? Um, or you could also do what yeah, other people have done, which is, I think there's some music bands and stuff that have done that, is you can pay after you've used it, right? So um, you can decide the value after it. Now, of course, a lot of this is based on how good quality your product is and how it helps them and all of those yeah, kind of, of things. But I think that there's a lot of different options because... The platform that you showed, uh, Fessel, is really, really good. And, uh, you know, it, when I look at that course, I'm like, whoa, that's like a, a, a lot of value there and everything. So it could be that you just go down that route where you just kind of uh, offer some of that stuff. And I think there's a lot of benefit that can come from just choosing different uh, options. Mm. Another, another yeah. strategy uh, I was thinking so yeah, of, uh, Fessel, <clears throat> is 
uh, to use social media purely to get people onto the mailing list where the actual launch will happen. Mm. And so that could be like, mm. uh, you know, specific, like basically just create curiosity on social media. And it could be like something is going on behind the scenes and you can't really know fully about it unless you're on the actual yeah. mailing list. Um, and then you could incentivize it further by, so by joining the mail list, they're going to find out their curiosity will be, um, what's the word quenched or whatever it is. Um, and then, but then you could offer something free peaked, as well. Peaked is the word. No, not peak. Like it's, it's satisfied. You could say the, the curiosity is satisfied. Oh, okay, got you. So, um, uh, and then you could offer something free as well. Like, you know, sign up, um, and get this X thing free, which could be perhaps the first module or you know something like that um <clears throat> and then yeah just just like mm. so don't use social media to promote the the course just use it to get people on the list and then the list is where it all happens that, and that this, could be this, a way this well. is linked to that whole thing where they say you know uh, you should give in public and ask in private right meaning that whenever yeah. you are out in the public all you do is give value and this is what we wanted to do with muslim mastery where we never ever wanted to go out and just ask people to buy stuff from us. All we did is just produce valuable content for them first. And then when they were with us privately within the mailing list, that's the only place where we would ask them for something like make a purchase or give us some feedback or something. Right. Um, and so I think that's a good way to be on social media where people just see you give, 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 give. And then, you know, they'll automatically kind of come and join you on the mailing list. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. So, so one question I have then, right? So one, this is all, a lot of this stuff is like build your list, build your um, audience. And so you might build an audience on YouTube, you might build it on Facebook, but ultimately what we want is you want to build it on a mailing list. Uh, now, do you recommend this as an individual strategy or as a business strategy? Because like I said, there's businesses out there who are in the, in, who are in the business of selling multiple courses for different instructors, right? And, and so with that in mind, um, that, that audience that you get feedback from might be a, a, a higgledy piggledy, you know, a mix of our oh, people are interested in this type of stuff. People might be interested in other type of stuff. And so, like a Udemy type of thing, let's say that. Uh, like, think about Udemy might have a hundred thousand list. Um, how, do you, how would you suggest that they would uh, share, you know, launches out to their list? Do they just send it to everyone? Do they segment it? Uh, how would how would that work? And how do you navigate through this stuff? Because I, I think there's an element here where the individual has to maybe um, create their own audience and have some lists. But as, a, as an organization or business thing, what, what, that, what would that look like? I think, yeah. that, you know, when it comes to, uh, before you go on to that, because I think one thing I would say is that I would focus on one platform at a time. Right? Yeah. So, you know, you're saying you're going to build this mailing list and all that. I would actually just choose. I would go Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, whichever one it is. I would focus on one of those platforms. And that, that's what we did with Muslim Mastery, where we basically focused purely on Facebook at the start. Um, and then we got that to over 100,000 uh, subscribers on Facebook, right? Now that we're over 100,000, for the last uh, year or so, we've been focusing on YouTube. So our YouTube channel was like at 20 grand or something. Now it's nearly going to be at, I think, 45 grand or 45,000. So we basically said, now we're shifting our focus from this platform to that platform. And I think that's how you get that mm -hmm. momentum and traction, right? Rather than you trying to go on all these different platforms, going, right, look, the type of avatar I've got, which platform are they on most? Okay, I'm just going to go and focus and hit hard on this one platform. A specific one now of course there's different factors to take into mind like you know organic reach and all these kind of things as well but generally i would kind of uh, build in one direction and then once you've got that whole uh, you know different launches different courses what i would do with that is the avatar i feel for you demi is still someone who thrives off learning who loves to consume content and all of those things mm -hmm. right so i still feel that that's an avatar in the way that it's done i think as people are getting more advanced then they can start to do wider things, okay? So when you first start out, just like I'm saying do one platform, I would say just do one communication and one launch to the whole of your list. But as you get more advanced, just like you start going onto multiple yeah. platforms, uh, in the same way, 
you could say, right, now I'm going to start to segment my email list, right? I'm going to see that the people took this lead magnet and that means that they're interested in confidence. They took this lead magnet, they're interested in happiness. And then I'm going to segment the list like that. And then I'm going to go, okay, this course is to do with confidence. I'm going to set it to that. But again, it depends. I think a lot of this is about what level are you on? Um, and then making sure that you scale and do things accordingly to the level you're on rather than trying to overwhelm yourself and do everything uh, from the start. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, that's very, very good. Very good advice. Mm, okay. Yeah, when it comes to segmenting so, the list, um, I mean, if you're, if you're committed to whatever it is that you're doing and you're going to launch with, then uh, as, I guess as long as you understand the, the software well enough, then it's good to try and segment from day one. And just yes. by, you know, just by whenever they show interest in X, then tag them with uh, that topic, mm. you know, so then yeah. you have an idea of what they're interested in. Yeah. 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 yeah to tag them. Now you any, can any, even do it. On any recommendation level. for softwares that you would, you'd say to anyone to use? To, for, for, to, or do all mailing things have uh, tagging facilities and segmenting? I don't know about that, but obviously we always say active campaign and, uh, I think yeah, okay. Drip was good, but it got acquired, so I don't know if it's still called that. Yeah. Okay. And Keep and all of these. So, sure. um, yeah, it could even be the level actually, Faisal, where imagine someone like a Udemy, how big it is. I mean, Udemy, I feel, is different because they've got so much traffic coming. So, like, when yeah. I want to buy, a, like, a, a cheap course, I might go there and search it. Like, that's how big yeah. they've got. Yeah, and they've also spent, like, tens or maybe even more than $100 million on on everything yeah um <clears throat> but what you can do is if somebody visits a certain page let's say all of your um courses they have on the url they have slash and then a topic so it could be slash islamic history slash and then the course name you could say every time someone visits a page with islamic history in the url tag them with xyz if they're on the mailing list already you know you can do that stuff yeah. actually oh, very good. yeah that's very good yeah, uh, that's uh, that's the yeah that make that that really takes it the the automation to a next level. Yeah, that's quite advanced, but yeah. Yeah, awesome. Um, so <clears throat> the other thing that people I guess do for when it comes to launching their courses is that they start doing JVs and partnerships and and sort of mm. that. Uh, is that something that you recommend, mm. or is that something that mm. um, you know? Well, what's your thoughts on mm. those kind of things? I think that's something to do once you've proven it, like after the first launch or yeah. two or three, even. Uh, when you feel like confident that it's good and you know that you understand the audience that bought it and why they bought it, yeah. Yeah. then you can go to a bigger audience. And the same even applies when it comes to advertising. Like it'll be great to do a, 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 a quote unquote organic launch where you're selling to the mailing list and your social media audience. And then if you get a good response, you understand why they bought, who, what type of people bought, then you could have the confidence as well to say, okay, I'm going to put a budget into advertising as well. So I think the mm -hmm. same goes for JVs. Yeah, makes sense. Um, or, or even something you could create a whole product with a JV in mind, obviously, if you agree that beforehand, mm -hmm. where you could say, okay, I've got the content, they've got the audience, maybe we could do it together from scratch, we could actually okay, plan cool. it together. Yeah. Mm, good. And I think this is, this is actually a really important point. I mean, because... You know, whenever you create something with a clear objective, which is a, a good product market fit from the start, I think you end up with a lot of success at the end, um, where a lot of the time what happens is that we do it the other way, where we basically yeah. just start thinking about a course. And I feel that this is what happened with us within Muslim Mastery as well, where we kind of started the course before we started our marketing journey. Um, and so then as in the end, we kind of ended up with something which was kind of right, but then we had to kind of work on the marketing. And so... Yeah, and so I think that a lot of this is, it's a bit like the book writing thing, yeah, where you want to make sure that you get the marketing elements right and clear in your head first, and then you go and create based upon what you've learned uh, about demand and all mm. those kind of things. So yeah. I think it's really, really important that anyone that's watching this and thinking about courses and all this stuff, they need to have that mindset of actually, uh, you know, doing it with an objective product market fit. But also I would say the whole element of sell before you build as well, like making mm -hmm. sure that, you know that people will really buy this course. If you can't sell a few of these courses uh, before you've made it, then you know it's it's a bad sign. It's a bad yeah. sign, right? Especially if they're priced at this kind of level, if they're like priced yeah. for $20, yeah. $50, that should exactly. be something that 
Oh yeah, yeah, I'll take one. Yeah, I'll take three, exactly. three, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, very good. Yeah, so I think what's quite good actually is to also uh, remind people or, or or introduce people to some of the the frameworks um, that uh, that we we cover that would really help uh, within this because I think that for example the the five P framework um, we talk about it extensively throughout some of these episodes but. Um, and that's for product market fit in general. But actually, you could that, that product market fit is the whole um, the macro for the entire business and strategy and stuff. But even at a micro level, looking at a course, you can actually do a five P's just for a course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, 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 so that's the one thing. But even things like the the uh, transformation grid is something that's really good to what's yeah. the before, what's the after, where they're kind of going towards. So. Yeah, yeah, and the, the, I think the training. On MuslimCEO.com, that covers um, those frameworks. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. 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 Very good. So, so you, you, Faisal, you know these like different launch strategies we've written here. Um, I think we we need to just clarify that we're not we're saying that there are many available to you. You wouldn't yeah. do all of these, no, of course. Yeah, exactly. At the same exactly. time. Yeah. yeah, that's why I said choose. Yeah, choose your launch strategy. Yeah. 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 So perfect. Right. Okay. Cool. Any 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 last uh, bits of advice for anyone thinking of creating a course? But I mean, one thing one thing that I will say right is that you know we're in this you know two hundred years ago we were in the agricultural age right and so what happened was people would grow crops and then they would uh, they would grow crops and that's how they would trade so okay I, I'll take your potatoes you take my tomatoes right and that's how they uh, their life day to day life went then we moved to the industrial age. And people worked in factories, and that's how they live their day to day life. They got their wages and stuff like that. And we're now living in the information age. So essentially, how people should be trading is, is, is or making their money is through their information or their knowledge. But we're still kind of in the the back end of the industrial aspect in in a lot of things. So things are shifting massively towards you know this online and knowledge knowledge economy. And so more and more people will be creating their own courses and 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 doing things for themselves. So um, do you have any last last words of uh, advice or suggestions for someone who maybe has been sitting on they're, they're an expert in the field they're, they've been doing project management in their career for 10 years or they've been doing such and such I think okay you know what I actually do need to actualize or, or actually create something that um, I can you know benefit others with all my expertise mm. you know what you said Faisal just now maybe we're not in the information age anymore maybe we're in the thinking age or reasoning age um, because I feel like information you know um, Alexa can get you information mm. right and if you know just in probably a few short years um, there'll be many different like uh, kind of uh, AIs that are able to sift through all the information sure, sure. out there yeah, of course, and, of course. and get it to you but what humans still can uniquely do maybe yeah. is like critically think and reason um, and also skills like so so that's why uh, when you're making a course you don't want to just give information you want to show them how the information can be applied yeah. to get them a skill or get them that benefit you know so information is is i don't want to say worthless but, no, but it's, it's, less, quantity. it's a quantity absolutely yeah, yeah, it's commoditized yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's that's a, a different way of thinking a little bit is like the information not what makes it valuable it's how you show them to turn the information into action. Yeah. yeah that could be something to keep in mind with so uh, there's, courses. There's two things I had in mind because you, you asked two separate questions, actually. One was to do with uh, all the courses out there. And then the other one is to do with um, actually doing it. So just regarding courses, what I would say is that you have to realize that, um, you know, YouTube and Google, like I mean, saying is packed full of information. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so whatever you're going to do as a course, like someone else can find that stuff, right? So a lot of this for free, uh, yeah. for free right? Um, but there's so much noise and there's so much information and all this kind of stuff. What is it that will make you stand out from everyone else talking about the same thing? It comes fundamentally down to them knowing you, liking you and trusting you. Mm. And the foundation of them uh, knowing you, liking you and trusting you is empathy is them showing you understanding of your situation fundamentally that's what it comes down to right that if you've got 10 different people talking about you know let's say marketing 
the one you're going to be naturally attracted to is the one that understands your situation the most right so when you're creating content and you're creating information you need to be very very focused on showing the audience that you understand their situation right because if you can show them that you understand their current situation then they will really really want to go with you even if you don't have the best solution right so one element is whatever field you're in you know you need to be working on you know showing them that you understand them showing them on making uh, their situation real showing them their future and making that real for them and really understanding them on that deep level that will basically set you apart from everyone else now in terms of the second point about like you know uh, i i haven't done the course yet i want to do it this and that um i i kind of talk about this in the confidence program that i do which is that fundamentally what you need to realize is that you have been through experiences in your life which people are struggling through right now um and most of us don't go out and do the things we need to do like create courses like do speeches or websites or videos or whatever because we are afraid of the judgment uh, of of others and what we perceive to be uh, the judgment of others uh, if we were to go out and do something and so what i would say is that you need to stop focusing on yourself you need to stop being selfish and you need to start focusing on your audience and the value you're going to bring to them and once you start shifting your focus away from yourself onto them it becomes so much easier for you to take action and to get over these things that are holding you up and a lot of this to do with intention you know if you're truly doing it for the sake of Allah you want to help someone then you know the fact that you've got a spot on your nose or you've got a bald patch and all this stuff it shouldn't stop you and so i think the advice is to just go out there and do it and shift the focus onto the people you're trying to help rather than yourself yeah like that's amazing like advice i think that's really that's really that's actually a really powerful thing to kind of end on because so much of uh, of things preventing us from taking action is actually ourselves and our ego and you know how we might think people will think of us etc and so but actually if we just um you know dropped that and we just took the action and really really shared for the benefit of people i think the world would be a much much better place for sure okay so this was episode 11 of marketing while muslim in this episode what did we cover we covered selling short courses cheaper on cheaper on the side of things uh, courses and we started by talking uh, about the kind of product market fit and who this is for what benefit they're going to find in it and tweaking the messaging and the marketing of the actual course to uh, make it more attractive to that person and make it less of a niche product in the first place then we talked about launching how do you launch we talked to so through so many different launch strategies doing it privately in the list doing it through social media doing it uh, finding out what the what the people want through the list and asking and engaging with the list and then uh, we wrapped up with some general advice on creating course going forward with it what mindset to have think of serving others thinking of, think of the experiences that you have that they're going through and you could help them with and don't keep it in because you're worried about what others will say but instead focus on other people and what you can help them with. Uh, this uh, episode, this, uh, and like all the episodes, they're available on YouTube, Facebook, in video format, and everywhere you get podcasts in audio format. Uh, we're Muslim CEO, uh, MuslimCEO.com, if you're interested in finding out more. Uh, thank you to Muhammad and Faisal, and Salaamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullah. Subhanakallah, Allah, Alhamdulillah, 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 Alham